Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2Design. In this video, I will show you how to improve your animation using multiples. Let's get started. Mirrors can improve your animation readability as it creates a link in between poses. It's perfect for fast motion. Multiples are a kind of smears that conveys fast motion by duplicating an element multiple times on screen. Some rigs may allow you to build smears by deforming the mesh. We generally do this by creating extra controllers that allow you to push and pull the mesh. You can also use shape keys for extra effects. Learn more about this in my previous tutorial. Multiples are often used in movies, but we can also use them in game. Here I have a very fast gameplay animation from Noara the Conspiracy, and I already created some smears on the Sith using bone-based deformation. If you want to create this kind of animation, check out Alive, my Blender animation course. To improve this animation, I like to add multiples. The basic principle is to duplicate the mesh. I will select his weapon, enter edit mode, press L to select all linked vertices, Press Shift D to duplicate them and P to separate them. This generates a new object, including the separated meshes. When you do so, the created object inherits all the modifiers from the source object. As I don't want this to be animated, I will apply the armature modifier. Also, since I don't need all the other modifiers, I will just get rid of them. So now I have this separated object and I can edit it. Here come the fun part. I will duplicate the mesh we have created just to have a backup object I can duplicate later on. And I will simply hide it in the outliner. And now I will edit the mesh to create those multiples in between the two frames. My goal is to support the motion path of the blade. That really is the base principle. From there, what you can do is to edit the mesh. You can merge or collapse vertices to shorten the mesh, for example. I'm selecting big chunks of the mesh and I just press M in edit mode to merge those vertices. Then I can duplicate the mesh if I want, just offset it a bit to create the multiple. From there, I will repeat the process by duplicating my previous mesh and then editing the new one to create a new multiple. You can hide the previous multiples to focus on the one you are created. Don't hesitate to deform the mesh. Just imagine you are drawing or sculpting speed effect using it. Here I have created five different objects, each of them corresponding to one frame in the animation. Some are stretched, other are duplicated. You should check cartoons animation to see what kind of multiples you can create. There are different ways to animate or use those multiples. Basically, what we want is just to animate their visibility. If we go under the object properties visibility, we can switch on and off the viewport and render visibility exactly as you would do in the outliner. And these properties can be keyed whether by clicking this round icon or simply by pressing I hovering over the display icons. From there, you just need to key the visibility of the object, making them visible and renderable on the frame they are supposed to appear, and disabling all of this on the previous and next frame. Once done, you will be able to see all the keys in the dope sheet. And then when you play the animation, it should be a little like that. Each mesh will appear in sequence during the animation, creating a nice mirror effect. Now, this is not my favorite method, so I will show you another one. Let me clean my file. I will get rid of all the keys I've added on the visibility and make sure I show all my objects. For each object, I will go on the frame they are supposed to appear and I will key their scale. I go on next frame, select the second object, press I and key the scale and do this for all the objects. Then I will get back to the beginning of my animation or the beginning of my smear effect where I don't want to see all those objects and to do so I can simply scale them to zero. Now by default Blender will interpolate the scale so we will see those getting bigger and bigger and it doesn't look very good. To get rid of the interpolation, I will simply select all the keys and press T and switch to constant interpolation, also known as stepped mode. Now there's no more interpolation and the objects are popping on the screen. So now what I can do is on the next frame they appeared, 
I will just scale them to zero again so that they disappear. And I'm done with the effect. I prefer this method because if you forget to key the renderability of the object in the previous method, the objects will appear on all the frames during the render even if they were not appearing on screen in your viewport. While with the scaling method, you won't have any mistake. And yes, you can reproduce this kind of effect in your game engine and we'll see that in a further tutorial. This is the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.